Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American mystery adventure television series called The Mysterious Benedict Society. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The premise of the movie is set far in the future. Our world is secretly being attacked by a mysterious force that is making people more anxious every day. Because of the anxiety, the illusion of international panic, known as the emergency, is created. It has induced citizens with a fear of something bad happening, which, in turn, messes with the economy and other factors plaguing the world. Rainey is an orphan who loves to read and enjoys his own company. He wants to make friends, but the children in the orphanage make fun of him for being intelligent. He often feels out of place, mostly because the others aren't half as smart as him. His only mentor is his Tamil language teacher, Miss Perumal. One day, she shows him an advertisement about a test, in which the winners are awarded a scholarship to attend a prestigious school called the Boatwright Academy. Rainey has always wanted to go to Boatwright, but he doubts his own abilities. Miss Perumal assures him that he will be the most deserving one out of all the attendees of the test. The next morning, she comes to pick him up. Then they drive to the examination hall and separate after a hug. Many children alongside him have come to take the test. Their examiner is number two, a quirky but strict woman who briefs them on what they can and cannot do. Rainey looks at the first question, which asks him if he has a chance to save only one between an elephant and a llama falling from a height, who would he save? Rainey answers that he would save the elephant in hopes that it could break the llama's fall and both of them would survive. After answering several such questions with answers related to compassion, he reaches the last one that asks him if he is brave. Rainey takes time to think about it and answers that he would like to think so. Number two asks them to drop their pencils. She grades the papers as the students wait patiently. After finishing, she informs them that the students who pass this test will be admitted to the second phase of the exam. They should report to a building in the next block at exactly 1 p.m. She also emphasizes that they are only allowed to bring a single pencil and eraser to the test. When Rainey asks her if they will be provided with sharpeners in case the lead breaks, she answers that they will have everything necessary for the test. Then she reads the list of students who passed that only has Rainey's name on it. Everyone else disappointedly leaves the premises while Rainey goes to the next examination hall. While walking inside, a girl before him named Rhonda accidentally drops her pencil into a sewer drain. Rhonda's friend abandons her and walks inside, but Rainey offers to help her. They only have a few minutes before the exam starts, so he breaks his pencil into two and hands one half to her, confident that a sharpener will be provided inside. She expresses gratitude and offers to show him the answers during the test, but Rainey declines the offer. In the examination hall, number two explains to them that anyone who speaks during the test will be dismissed. She also adds that the test will be long and difficult. A girl groans at the comment and is disqualified for making noise. Rainey raises his hand and gestures that he needs to sharpen his pencil. Number two understands and allows him to do so. The test finally starts and only a few seconds in, a boy runs away shouting that he cannot do this. Rainey focuses on the questions which are too difficult for him to understand. Most of them are advanced level questions about world history and geography. Still, Rhonda, who is seated right before Rainey, finishes in only half an hour. Before submitting the answers, she secretly drops a small piece of paper for Rainey. He notices the paper has all the answers on it. Although Rainey is struggling with the questions, he doesn't pick it up. The atmosphere is intense, as some students almost cry because of the difficult questions. Rainey knows none of the answers, but upon reading the questions carefully, he realizes that the answer to the first question is hidden in the last question. In the same way, all of the answers are in the questions themselves. After finding that out, he easily writes them down and does great on the test. A while later, the result is announced and again, only Rainey passes. It is surprising to him because Rhonda has cheated. She wishes him luck and leaves him to wait for further instruction. Then, an A-grade student named Sticky Washington enters the room. 
Sticky has an eidetic memory, meaning he can remember everything he sets his eyes on. He was also the only one who passed the test in his batch, which he thinks is weird because someone else had cheated. It turns out that they had the same experience before the test and met the same girl who dropped her pencil in the sewage. They figure out the actual aim of the trick was to test their loyalty and kindness. Therefore, they passed, and the other students who only focused on the questions did not. Suddenly, a girl comes running to the room and introduces herself as Kate. She is an athletic and adventurous girl who never goes anywhere without her red bucket of tools. Kate claims that she didn't actually pass the test because the questions were too difficult. In fact, she was selected because she helped number two chase away all the angry parents by creating a distraction. Then, Krista and Dewey join the group. They have also passed the exam and are pretty confident that they will make it to the Boatwright Academy. Krista is a know-it-all who thinks that everyone is inferior to her. After the team has assembled, they are introduced to Milligan, the overseer of the next test. He instructs them to enter a room one after another and asks Krista to go first. She walks into the room and notices the chessboard patterned floor. A note on the floor asks her to cross the room without stepping on the black or white squares. She bluntly says no, refusing to do the task because she thinks it is a trick question. Milligan disqualifies her and asks her to go home. Next, Dewey enters the room and uses his athletic abilities to jump to the yellow squares. He sticks to the wall and leaps to the other end of the room easily. After he passes, Kate enters with her red bucket of tools. She uses a rope from her bucket and ties it tightly to make a pathway. Kate used to work in a circus for a long time and can easily walk on ropes. She uses her skills to reach the other end and complete the task. When it is Sticky's turn, he reads the question carefully and figures out that it specifically asks them to not step with their feet. So, he instead gets on all four and crosses the room. Lastly, Rainy thinks for a long time and simply walks to the other end of the room. When asked how he passed the test, he claims that the boxes had longer lengths, which means that they weren't squares. Since the question asked them to not step on the squares, he simply walked across and passed. After that, Milligan asks them to come with him to the place where their final test will be taken. He takes them to a sewer, claiming that it is the pathway to reach their destination. The kids find it odd that the entrance examination to such a prestigious school makes the finalists walk through sewage. Rainey also notes that none of the examiners have mentioned the Boatwright Academy yet. He still trusts Milligan and follows him to reach the front lawn of a mansion. Milligan leaves them alone for a few minutes to check if everything is prepared inside. When the kids are left to themselves, Dewey starts to exercise while the other three talk about their families. Kate reveals that her mother died when she was a little girl and her father abandoned her in an orphanage. She doesn't blame him because that is how she found her love for circuses. Rainey also reveals that he never knew his parents, but he still misses them generally. Dewey follows up with a comment saying that his parents love him and call him their miracle. Good for you, Dewey. Following that, they are called inside the mansion that looks like a maze. Rhonda appears in front of them and reveals that she was sent to test them. For the next task, they are kept in four different parts of the maze and are asked to find a way to reach the second floor. Once they have climbed to the second floor, the first three to ring the bell will pass. As a hint, Rhonda mentions that they should be able to do this with their eyes closed. The task finally starts, and Rainey immediately begins looking for clues. He sees that each doorway has four signs that point in different directions. Meanwhile, Sticky takes the clue seriously and tries to solve the maze with his eyes closed. Because of his photographic memory, he navigates the way pretty quickly. Kate, on the other hand, thinks out of the box. She opens a vent on the wall and uses it to climb up. At last, there is Dewey, who follows Sticky around. When he reaches the stairs, Dewey pushes him to the wall and rings the bell before everyone. Rainy soon finds out that the signs are in Braille, which tell him the direction. He also reaches the stairs and helps Sticky up. Kate is already there and is waiting for them, so they can all ring the bell together. As they do, the three win, and Dewey is disqualified. In the instructions, it was said that the first three to ring the bell will win, and because Sticky, Kate, and Rainy were the three who rang it together, they won. Following that, they are introduced to the mastermind of the test, Mr. Nicholas Benedict. As they talk about further orientation, the fourth and youngest member, named Constance, joins their team. She is a small, intelligent, and witty girl who doesn't care about what anyone thinks. 
It turns out that she passed the test a bit differently than the others. First, she crossed all the questions, claiming that they were wrong. Then, she disobeyed the instructions and brought as many pencils as she wanted. And in the last test, she enjoyed a sandwich instead of solving the maze. Her unique personality still got her selected. Then, for the moment of truth, Mr. Benedict tells them that they haven't been recruited for Boatwright Academy's scholarship. Instead, they have been selected for an undercover mission to save the world. The children can hardly comprehend what is going on. Mr. Cumberbatch explains that they are the only ones who can end the emergency and save the world from chaos. It turns out that a mysterious subliminal message is being broadcast all around the globe through radios and televisions. When people listen to such TV and radio shows, they only hear the sound that has the highest frequency. But behind that sound, someone has added violent messages in a low frequency that the human ear cannot catch. Although people cannot hear the message, their brain reacts to the frequency. Hence, they subconsciously start to believe the message, which makes them anxious. These messages have created the illusion of international panic that we call the emergency. After a year of research, Mr. Benedict has found out that the signals of the messages are coming from an island that is the home to a children's school. Hence, only kids are allowed to go there. Therefore, their group has been selected for the task. He gives them the option to say no and is happy that he got to meet such intelligent kids. After much thinking, all of them agree to join the mission and start their training. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.